everybody I'm Nick and as you may already know I'm not the biggest fan of auto mappers in Dota and C Sharp. I don't like the idea that you leave it up to chance for something to just map one object to another which can then lead to issues so that's why I personally like to write my mappers manually because I do use mappers because you sort of have to use mappers in many ways and so instead I just manually write my own mappers and with AI helping writing code this becomes very very easy However, there's a new player in the game that does many, many things right. And I think if you do like using mappers, this is the library you should be using instead. So in this video, I'm going to show you what this library is, what it does for you, and what it does better than all the other libraries, in my opinion. I have a simple application here, which has an in-memory app DB context. The reason why I added some EF core here is because the argument of many people using Automapper is that, oh, Automapper can do projections for me from the database, so I'm going to use Automapper. So I'm going to show you how this library can do that too, even better. So I have a simple person over here, and I want to map this person to a person DTO. Now, me, Nick, I would just go class, I don't know, person DTO. Here you go. You have the DTO, and maybe I say public person map to person. Now, this might look wrong, but it does actually map the right fields over here. And that's great. Manual mapping and so on. Lovely. However, there is a brand new library called Facet that doesn't just do mapping, but it sort of allows you to go beyond the concept of direct mapping into faceting, the idea that something can have many forms. And that's what I really like about this project. It also comes with a bunch of extension packages and EF Core support. So if you are using projections in EF Core, this will also work with that as well. So let me just show you how that would work, how that sort of mapping would work. First, I'm just going to create a new class called Facets. And then I'm going to create a public partial class called Person DTO. And then on that, I'm going to add the Facet attribute. I'm going to say the type I want it to be mapped from. So we're going to say person. And in this case, I also want to exclude a property. So let's say I want to exclude the person dot email property. That's it. That's that. You created your facet. Now you can go here and you can say in the simplest way, DTO equals person dot. And you have a few extension methods because I have the extension uh, of facets, the facet dot extension. So I can say to facet person to person DTO. And this will now map it. So if I say console.write line, so I can sort of block it and I put a breakpoint here. Uh, one of the things I don't like about Facet, and that's actually the only thing I don't like about Facet, is that you shouldn't need to provide the incoming object to give it the map to object. So you don't need the source. The source should be able to be inferred by the type the extension is based on. There might be a reason why this is the case. And if you're the creator watching this video, please leave a comment down below. And by the way, if you like what you see in this video, I'm going to put a link to Facet in the description down below as well. Give it a start on GitHub. It really helps open source developers. So I'm going to say, yeah, map that. And as you can see, I have a DTO with the age and the name. We do not have the email. And it just maps it just like that very, very easily. All source generated as well. So I could go to the DTO and you can see the code generated over here. We have the constructor, we have an expression called the projection. We're going to see why this is useful in a second. But that's basically all it really does behind the scenes. Partial class, it implements the rest of the class. And we can use this very nice C-sharp feature to sort of not have to have this, for example. So, so far, so good. What if you want some more manual configuration with your mapping? Well, you can actually create a custom map config. For example, you can go here and say person map config. And by having the mapping extension, you can say I facet mapping configuration from person to person DTO. And you can override how the mapping happens here. So you can sort of have the source, you can have the target, and you can say target dot name is not just source.name, but it's actually source.name hyphen the source.email, just as an example. And then the age is the age. If I have that and I go to the facet and I say configuration is type of person map config, then when I do the exact same thing as before, as you're going to see over here, and this will be taken into account. And now the, the name is a combination 
of these two things. Oh, the email is courses at Dome Trainer. We do have courses at Dome Trainer. We have a summer sale. Until the end of summer, you can use code SUMMER30 at checkout for 30% off every course, every bundle, and Dome Train Pro. Link in the description down below. What a seamless segue that was. Mwah. Anyway, so now that we have some custom mapping and a simple way to do the mapping, we can go further to some more advanced stuff. Uh, by the way, another thing I want to show you, just the, the old school way of doing the mapping as well. You can say new person DTO and you can pass the person here because this is also a constructor generated. This will also do the mapping by passing an entire object that will then be copied into the, the new object. And actually, if you go here, you will see the config map thing being applied over here because we have a mapper. So all that is good, but many of you must be asking, Nick, I'm using EF Core, I want projections. What do I do there? Well, I have you covered. Let's say I want to get DB people. What do I say? Well, DB context people to list. Okay, but how do I map them to my DTO? Well, I say select, and then I say, what is it? It's person DTO, the thing I want it to be, and then projection. And that is it. It will use the mapper and project the incoming type to whatever I want my mapping type to be. In this case, person DTO. So if I do that, I'm going to get it. You can also do it with in memory. Let's say you use link. So you have something like, so let's just say list person. And then I'm going to say list.select. You can still say person DTO.projection. However, if you to list it, you will have to compile the projection over here because it's an expression and you want it to be a function. So if I go here and I just run it, I don't really have anything in the DB context. So this would be an empty array. But if you did have something, the projection would be applied. And then you have the list. And as you can see, this is also applied over here with the configuration, which is really, really cool. However, this is sort of a long way of doing it. You can actually say simple equals list dot select facets. And by doing that, you can say person and then person DTO. And that will then automatically map We're using the projection behind the scenes. And you can say to list and all that. So all that also works. And you can go even further. If you don't want to have your projections on EF core like this manually, you can say co equals db context dot people dot select dot two facets async person person DTO, and this will also do a, effectively a two list async because this will return, as you can see here, a list. Of course, you have to await it, but it's a task of list, so it's a list. And this would do a two list, but also map it using that projection, which is really, really cool. My favorite thing about this library is how well thought out it is and how feature rich it is for someone who wants to do advanced mapping. Now, I cannot end this video without at least talking about performance. And that's probably the weakest point of this library. It is not bad by any means. I'm actually going to run a benchmark right now just to show you very quickly how simple mapping performs. So benchmark runner, change this to release mode. The rest will be ignored. And I want to go to the benchmark to show you what I have. So I have a couple of benchmarks. One using facet, one using mapster, which is a very, very fast way to do mapping. And it's not even using a source generated version, it's still like extremely, extremely performant. So we have a person, we're going to map it. I'm going to quickly just run this benchmark. We're just comparing mapping one object as a baseline. Actually, to give it a more fair chance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the custom configurator because that will obviously skew the results by just a tiny bit. So I'm going to run it now again and see what we get. So it's also back. And as you can see, 74 nanoseconds for facet, eight nanoseconds for mapster. Now, one is more feature rich on the other. One has more stuff to do. And that sort of means it does come with some performance heads. I think facet, if it gets more popular, it can actually be optimized quite a bit. There's a lot of room for optimization. However, in the grand scheme of things, thinking that you're going to use something like that alongside the database, this difference will be very easily load leveled and you're never going to see those 70 nanoseconds ever. Even as it is right now, I'm more comfortable using this. By this, I don't mean Mapster, I mean Facet, than anything else in the market right now because it does what I want, it does it well, and performance is reasonable. However, 
Some people get obsessed about nanoseconds. I used to be like that. I'm not like that anymore because I'm running a business and I'm focusing on the product. Not so much of going smaller just for the sake of going smaller. I like this. If you do, I recommend you give it a star on GitHub. I think it's a great project. If not, let me know why you don't like it. And if you are someone obsessing over performance, I highly recommend you take a look at this code base and try to improve it and help the author make the package better because it's really, really well designed, except for that one thing where you need to have both the source and the destination without having to infer this. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.